Forget about years, centuries, or millennia. The most important story in the history of our universe isn't measured in ages, but in fractions of a second. We are about to travel back to a time before time as we know it, to witness the birth of everything. This isn't just a history lesson. This is a survival guide for the first, single, most violent second of existence. Before our journey begins, we must understand that there is a wall, a point in time before which our known laws of physics, including Einstein's general relativity, break down completely. It's called the Planck Epoch, a sliver of a moment lasting just 10 to the minus 43 seconds. To put that in perspective, there are more Planck moments in a single second than there are seconds in the entire age of the universe. Within this epoch, the temperature exceeded 10 trillion trillion degrees, a state so extreme that the four fundamental forces of nature, gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear forces were believed to be merged into a single, unified superforce. Here, space-time itself was a chaotic quantum foam, and concepts like before and after lose their meaning. To understand what happens here would require a theory of quantum gravity, a holy grail of modern physics that we have not yet found. What happened there, we may never know. Our journey starts the instant after. The clock is ticking. At 10 to the negative 36 seconds, the universe you are in is smaller than a single proton, yet it contains all the energy that will ever exist. And then, it happens. Space-time itself begins to expand at a rate that defies all logic. This is inflation. It's not an explosion in space, it's the hyper-expansion of space itself, driven by a mysterious inflaton field. In a fraction of a second, the universe grows from subatomic size to larger than a galaxy, expanding exponentially faster than the speed of light. This isn't a violation of relativity. Space itself can expand at any speed. This incredible event, first proposed by physicist Alan Guth, is the leading theory to explain some of the deepest cosmic mysteries. It solves the horizon problem, explaining why distant parts of the universe have the same temperature, and the flatness problem, explaining why the geometry of the universe is so perfectly flat. In this inferno, the unified superforce begins to break. Gravity peels away first, becoming its own distinct force. The universe is a featureless, searingly hot fog of pure energy. At 10 to the minus 12 seconds, one trillionth of a second, the explosive inflation is over. The energy from the inflaton field has decayed, flooding the universe with a seething, hot plasma of fundamental particles. The cosmos continues to expand and cool, but at a much more manageable pace. The temperature has dropped just enough for the first fundamental particles to condense out of the raw energy, like water droplets forming from steam. This is the birth of quarks, the fundamental constituents of protons and neutrons, leptons such as electrons and neutrinos, and the force-carrying particles like gluons, which mediate the strong nuclear force but it's still far too hot for them to form anything stable. They exist in a chaotic, perfect fluid known as the quark-gluon plasma, a state of matter so extreme we've only briefly recreated it in particle accelerators like the Large Hadron Collider. This is a cosmic soup where particles are created and annihilated in a continuous frenzy. For every billion particles of antimatter, a billion and one particles of matter are born, a tiny asymmetry known as baryogenesis, which is the sole reason anything tangible exists today. Without this slight imbalance, everything would have annihilated into pure light, 
leaving behind a universe of nothing but photons. At 10 to the minus sixth seconds, one microsecond, the universe has expanded to about the size of our solar system. The temperature has cooled to a mere few trillion degrees. This is a critical threshold. The strong nuclear force, the most powerful force in the universe, is now strong enough to overcome the incredible heat and bind the free-roaming quarks together for the first time in a process called quark confinement. The universe undergoes a phase transition, like steam condensing into water. The cosmic soup begins to form clumps. Quarks are now being confined into the first composite particles you would recognize. Protons, made of two up quarks and one down quark, and neutrons, made of one up quark and two down quarks. The fundamental building blocks of every atom in your body are being forged in this single microsecond. The universe has transitioned from a soup of fundamental particles to a soup of the particles that make up atomic nuclei. The clock finally strikes one second. Our journeys end. The universe is now a few light years across and it's still a blistering 10 billion degrees Celsius. It's a dense, opaque fog of protons, neutrons, electrons, neutrinos, and photons of light. The great annihilation between matter and antimatter has concluded, leaving behind the tiny surplus of matter that will go on to form everything we see. At this point, neutrinos, the ghostly fundamental particles, stop interacting with the other matter and begin to travel freely through space, forming a cosmic neutrino background that, if we could detect it, would be a snapshot of the universe at just one second old. The universe is still too hot for stable atoms to form. Any electron that tries to orbit a proton is immediately blasted away by a high-energy photon. The entire blueprint for our cosmos was laid down in less time than it takes to snap your fingers. If that sheer scale blows your mind, let me know by commenting with hashtag first second. For the next few minutes, a process called Big Bang Nucleosynthesis will take place, where protons and neutrons begin to fuse into the first light atomic nuclei. The extreme heat and density allow them to form deuterium, an isotope of hydrogen, and then go on to create nearly all of the helium and trace amounts of lithium in the universe today. The predicted abundance of these elements matches our observations perfectly, providing one of the strongest pieces of evidence for the Big Bang theory. But it would take another 380,000 years for the universe to cool enough for the first neutral atoms to form and for light to travel freely, an event we now see as the cosmic microwave background radiation. The most important work, however, was already done. The most violent, chaotic, and creative second in history was over.